welcome to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. I'm your host, Shannon Abels. And whether you're listening on your commute, exercising, working in the garden, or sitting down with a hot cup of tea or a cafe au lait, thank you for tuning in. Let's get started. Welcome to The Simple Sophisticate, episode 191. Today, we're doing something a little bit different, and it came about because I started to receive quite a few emails. The Ask Shannon questions kept coming in over the holiday break, and I realized, hey, I know there are many of you that want answers to these questions, so why don't I answer them in an impromptu sort of Ask Shannon episode. Now, may, many of you may remember that back in June, episode 163, we did it over an hour-long episode of Ask Shannon Questions and Answers, and we are going to do that again this coming summer, so be sure to keep your questions coming. Now, these particular questions were so specific to this particular time of the year that I wanted to make sure. I answer them now. But again, if you want your Ask Shannon question to be answered on an upcoming podcast episode, which will be this summer, be sure to send them in to me. Now, you may be wondering, what are we going to talk about today? Well, it's pretty much a wide arena. I announced it on Instagram over the weekend, the topics. We're going to talk about style and fashion. We're going to talk about travel to Paris and what to wear if you're traveling there during the spring season. And we're also going to talk about eating well, but simply during the work week and how to do it seasonally as well. So I hope you are curious about one or maybe more of those topics, because that's what we're going to talk about today. Now, before I dive into those questions and answers, today's petit plaisir is one that I have been loving every single day in the recent past week or so. And some of you may already know about it because I've been sharing it on Instagram stories, but I cannot recommend it more for something simple to start or end or enjoy during your day just to take your mind off things and also challenge it at the same time. So stay tuned. I'll share with you exactly what that is at the end of today's episode. But let's get into today's topic. So we're diving in. We're going to start with a Q&A from Jennifer about quality leather totes. Now her question was, I was going through your capsule wardrobe pieces and I saw the Mark and Graham Brooklyn tote and the Kuyana tote listed. I have been looking for a cognac purse and have seen both of these before in addition to Madewell and Everlane. Do you have any experience with either brand and or tote? Thank you so much, Jennifer. I have to share with you the tote that I do have. The tote that I have was actually something I purchased I think it was eight years ago from Banana Republic. And it's the classic leather brown cognac tote that she's talking about, I believe. And it was just under or just over $100. And it still looks like it did when I bought it. And I use it quite a bit. I use it when I travel. I put all of my media books and magazines and newspapers that I want to read. When I go to yoga, sometimes I put my yoga mat in there. In there. Uh, it's definitely a tote that I love. So I haven't had to buy another tote. However, I will answer your question and say that Everlane is a quality company as well as quality products at great fair prices. And I have included a link to one of their totes that is available in four different colors, the Everlane Day Market Tote. Now, some of them are on a wait list, but not all of them. It's only $165. You can also, as you said, Madewell Transport Totes are $168. They're on sale right now. So that similar classic style. I also did some digging online and found two different companies that I wanted to introduce you guys to. Both of them offer totes under $200. And I love this one that's from the company called Able. It's a Mamayi leather tote. And there are many different colors that are available. And I love the storyline behind this company. Their founding premise is that it's a lifestyle brand focused on ending generational poverty by working with women who have often overcome extraordinary circumstances. They're based in four different places around the world, one of which is in Nashville, Tennessee, and they manufacture directly in the communities that they wish to impact, both locally and globally, which creates jobs and ends the cycle of charity dependency. Now, these totes 
or same size as what you would think with the Madewell Transport Tote or the Everlane Day Market Tote, and they're $178. The other company that I found, WP Standards, they stand behind their their products. They will fix them if they break, and they have a vintage tote bag. So if you are someone who likes that vintage leather look, this is the tote for you. You can get it uh, monogrammed as well, and it ships for free if you are in the U.S. It's $195 and it is beautiful having taken a look at it. Now, all of these totes are on the show notes. I have something else I want to talk to you about as well from that company. If you're a traveler, they actually have a leather passport wallet, which caught my eye immediately. You can put your initials on it as well. But it's the size of your passport, so it's not long and narrow, and it is just for your passport. I believe you can actually slide in some cards, like debit or credit card or a license for your driver's license in there as well. But it is simple, beautiful, and just, well, it's leather, so it's going to wear and get that patina look as you go through the years of travel and have all sorts of stories. Now, the Graham, the Mark and Graham Brooklyn Tote, their colors, I fell in love with the light blue tote that they offered. I haven't purchased it. I was holding myself back because I really don't need another tote, but it's beautiful. It's also sold out. And so they have a few new color options. Most of them are monochromatic, but some of them aren't. For example, they have a white tote with cognac handles. They also have a brown and black combination, but then they have the classic black and cognac, and those are actually $225. And then they also have their East West leather tote, which is, again, I showed the pictures on the show notes, which was quite large. It's beautiful. It's classic. I think if you're looking for that classic large leather tote for travels, for yet yeah, well travels and going about a busy day, that would be a great tote. And that one is under $200. So all of these totes, the pictures, the links, the prices are all in the show notes, the simply luxuriouslife.com backslash podcast 191. Uh, thank you for your question, Jennifer. Hopefully one of these will be to your liking. And I have a feeling you've helped a lot of other people find the tote they've been looking for as well. So let's move on to the second question, which is tied with style. And it was a great question I received on Facebook from another Jennifer. And she wrote, I am currently binge listening to the podcast for the umpteenth time and you speak to quality over quantity frequently with which I completely agree. However, how is one to determine what brands or items are quality without having to spend a fortune playing trial and error? Thanks so much in advance. Keep up the awesome work. I look forward to every post and podcast. Jennifer, this is a great question. You're right. I do keep talking about quality over quantity and I think... I want to use this one example, and then I'll break it down into specific things to look for when you go shopping for these investment items. I want to use the example that I shared last November when I went shopping in London for a trench. Now, I knew exactly what I wanted. I wanted the classic Burberry trench. Part of the reason I felt confident buying that trench, I eventually did purchase it after I saved up enough money and knew how much I was going to have to save over the years, is because... Well, number one, prior to going to London the first time in 2012, I'd heard talk about these Burberry trenches and you see them in shows and you see them in whatever and you're like, well, they're just, it's just brand placement and it's not that great. So when I went to London the first time, uh, five, six years ago, I just had to go into the shop and try it on. What the heck? I knew I wasn't going to buy it, not even close, but I wanted to try it on and see what it was all about. I figured it out. I was like, oh, I get this. And I have since, as I've said in, in this post, worn and purchased other low priced, lesser quality trenches and have gone through them. They're they're not with me anymore. This is a quality made item. And I could see that I could feel it. And that's part of it. Feel the item, put it on, look at it, inspect it inside and out the seams, the type of fabric it uses, all those little details. And I have a list again on the show notes that will break it down. The other part of this is I knew exactly what I wanted, but I didn't get it until six years later. So sometimes it takes patience for those investment items. When you know exactly what you want, but you may not be able to afford it, the wait is worth it. You may have to, as I just mentioned, try other items out to learn this lesson. But 
once you get that item that fits well, that's made well, it's going to last a long time so long as you take good care of it because it's made to last. And those kind of brands are the brands you want to seek out. So let me give you five different tips to keep in mind when you're looking for quality brands that you're going to have to invest in. I'm going to start with this one. Check the label. Now, some of you may be saying, and I totally agree, just because you're paying more doesn't mean it's better quality. You're exactly right. However, the items that are made well and have been around and have stood the test of time can ask for that price because people, when they get those products, understand why. And that's why it's important to be a savvy shopper and do your homework prior to. Now, once you've done your due diligence and you follow the four steps that I'm going to talk about below in just a second, once you figure out that a brand is worth it, for example, there have been brands that have huge name recognition, and I'm not going to say their names on this episode, but I won't return to them. They have huge name recognition, but the quality was not up to my expectations. But there are more, more than not that are. And it is through trial and error. And that's why when I do recommend a brand and I say I've worn this, it's because I love it. Now, there are other items out there that I haven't worn, but I know people that I trust. My stylist friend, Tiffany Rogers, who lives in New York City, who styles people from around the world. She knows her brand. She goes to the shows. I trust her opinion. So that's, so that's the next step I want to talk to you about is to look to experts in the field that you trust. You can't know every brand. You can't know all the items out there. So look to the stylists that you trust. Look to the designers, their opinions that you trust. And once you know that brand is something that you have worn and love, for example, one of mine that I do love is Theory. It is about a, it's a mid-priced ranged item or items. I buy their sweaters, I buy their blazers, but they've been with me for years and I trust them. So if they make a new product and I think, oh, that style looks like something I'm going to want to wear, I don't hesitate to invest if it's exactly what I want and I can afford it. I would also recommend going to your trusted bloggers. Now, some of you may immediately be saying, whoa, 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 Shannon, you get some, uh, uh, you get some commissions on things that you post on your show notes and in your blog post. You're right. Some of them I do, but I also don't put things up that I don't trust or that I wouldn't recommend or that I wouldn't try myself or that, that don't, that doesn't align with my premise of this blog quality over quantity. And when I learn more information about a product, I bring that to the blog as well. It's, something I have to stand behind and I make mistakes, but I, I do my best to make sure that you know exactly where I stand with items and why I love it so that you can make sense of it for yourself and your lifestyle and so on and so forth. Also look to fashion columnists and critics. Those are obviously going to be people that have no gain, um, to give you an honest feedback on different items and products, things like that. The third thing I would recommend is to, if you're able to, try it on. Try on that label. Try on that dress. Go to that store or order a few different items from the online store if they have free shipping. Especially do this. And then you can ship it back if it doesn't work. Here are some things to check. Check the fabric. Feel it. Is it natural? Is it cotton, silk, linen, or wool? Choose natural fabrics over synthetic fabrics because they will last longer. However, even natural products can be diluted. So check the fiber quality and its density. You want to feel it. And the more fiber, the longer it will last. When it comes to the seams, especially check the buttons and the buttonholes. Make sure that the stitching is very tight. That's a good thing. You don't want any loose threads. That is a bad sign. Also check the seams, similar concept as far as making sure they're well done. If it is hand stitched, they're not going to be straight, but make sure they're tight, make sure they're secure. French seams are great seams to purchase. Those are quality, well done. Clothing that has lining is normally a very good sign. Just make sure to check the seams and check the fabric. Also, interfacing, if you have an item that has a collar or cuffs, that's a good sign because they have to take a bit more time. It gives it structure and it also takes more money to construct. So you're looking at all these little details that will 
go beyond that first wear when it looks fabulous. It actually travels the test of time and it still looks great on that 100th time that you wear it. So long as you've, so long as you've taken good care of it. And I've listed these uh, things to look for when it comes to checking the garment out on the show notes. The fourth thing, and I briefly mentioned at the top of this, is to have patience. You may have to try on more than a few different brands to find one that is not only top quality, but works well on your body type and is, and is to your taste. But your patience will pay off. Just be clear about what you want. Sometimes that takes time, as we talked about a few weeks ago about figuring out your signature style. Sometimes it takes time to do that, and I'll provide a link to figuring out your signature style as well. But once you know, just have patience until you find it. It is worth the wait. And last but not least, don't be afraid to return the item if it just doesn't feel right for you. That's why if you are shopping online, you know, check the shipping rates. Oftentimes they do give a free shipping uh, return label, which is fantastic. I, there's very few businesses out there that don't do that. And just return it. If you're in the shop, you love it, but you take it home and uh, you just change your mind and you haven't worn it, obviously the tag's still on it, return it. This is a trial and error process. Clothing is trial and error. As we get to know ourselves, we get to know our style. So just have patience with yourself and don't be afraid to turn things. Stores want you, and as much as they want to make money, they also want returning customers. And so they want to make you happy. For the most part, and this is, that's a general statement, I realize, but if you can be clear about what you want and why you want it, it's going to help them find it for you. If it's a brand that offers quality products, if it's not, then, then walk away walk away. Again, clarity about what we want is, is a great place to start. So I hope that answered some of the questions about knowing what to invest in. So the first thing is check the label. When it comes to brands you trust, keep returning to them. Why not? Keep it simple. And the second thing is to check the fabric, feel it, touch it, wear it, see how the, the item is made, what kind of seams and buttonholes and how those things are constructed. Also look to experts that you trust, stylists, designers, bloggers, fashion columnists, and critics. Have patience and then don't be reluctant to return something if it doesn't work for you. Thank you for your question, Jennifer. I think that is something that is an ongoing process for everybody as we move through life. And sometimes our styles, um, not sometimes, our styles do change as we grow and move through life. Hopefully those tips will help you out. All right. Our third question has to do with eating. So simple seasonal eating for a busy schedule. And this question came from Marty and she wrote, hi, Shannon, I have to be at work at 7.30 a.m. each day and don't get home until 5.30 p.m. or later. So there's not much energy left to get up early to cook breakfast or spend a couple of hours in the kitchen cooking dinner. I don't mind spending maybe an hour cooking dinner and cooking enough so I could eat it for lunch or supper another time during the week. I love the idea of eating with the seasons like you've mentioned. Can you recommend any books, cookbooks, etc. that might have sample menus and simple recipes so you can eat whatever is in season at the moment but use easily found ingredients and the recipes don't require you to be a trained chef spending most of the day in the kitchen. I've tried to come up with my own menus, but haven't had much success and found it exhausting. Any recommendations you can give me would be greatly appreciated. Thanks for all you do. Marty. Marty, this is a great question. And my first recommendation is to stay right there on the Simply Luxurious Life blog and go to the capsule menu page underneath the, the, the Simply Luxurious Life shop on the menu, because I am right in the middle of trying to get a capsule menu out for every single season. In fact, I've made a sample menu for a weekly schedule. I've made a fall and I've made a spring menu. And I may be wondering, where is the winter one? The winter one was just completed this weekend with a few of the new recipes that you may have seen on the blog the last few weeks, as well as incorporating other fall recipes and just seasonless recipes that I think will hopefully solve part of the dilemma. So this is one thing that I do. I have my seasonal recipes that I go to. For example, I go to the grocery store. I'm going to get some Brussels sprouts um, this week. They're in season and they're easy to roast. It has some pancetta and then after it's roasted, you throw some balsamic on it and voila, you have your vegetable side. But at the same time, I also just have defaults that I go to for lunch and for dinner. And I provided a list of these examples on the show notes, but let me give you an example. 
I too have a busy schedule, so I can completely relate. I'm exhausted. I love stepping in the kitchen, but I can't do it for hours and hours. In fact, this past week, I had a new recipe that I tried and I shared it yesterday, the the mushroom thyme and leek galette. And I stepped in the kitchen. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm going to make this. I'm so excited. I'm hungry. And I'm also really tired, but I'm really hungry and I have all the ingredients. And I realized, oh, that's right. The dough has to chill twice, not just once. So I actually ended up making the dough the day before, left it in the fridge. And then the next day, it took all of 20 minutes plus the cooking time of 35 minutes to make that galette. And I had that for dinner that night without having to be in the kitchen for more than 20 minutes. And then I had lunch and leftovers for the next night for dinner as well. So I think part of it is knowing what you can do, as you've already very clearly pointed out, but having backups or defaults that you can just automatically go to when the day's been really long and you want to eat well, but oh, it's so tempting to call for takeout. Totally get that. So one of my favorite go-tos is simply making sure that I always have a good protein, a low starch vegetable prepared in a simple manner, such as roasted, steamed, etc., and then a side of whole grains. So for example, let me give you two different meals you could do. This is again, the default. This isn't seasonal. It's just default. You're busy. You're making sure you're picking up things at the grocery store. So I love my salmon. I'm on the Pacific Northwest. So I have salmon um, readily. So I picked up some sockeye salmon recently. And what I like to do is simply just pan fry it. I cut my little filet. I season it with salt and pepper. And then in the pan, in my cast iron pan or my copper pan, I add about a teaspoon, teaspoon and a half of unsalted butter. And I put it on top of the salmon. And I put that in the pan and I put a cover on it at medium heat just for about two or three minutes. I'll check it and then I'll flip it for another two or three minutes and boom, my salmon is done. It's healthy. It's seasoned. It's flavorful. While I'm doing that, I also am roasting some vegetables in the oven and I'm cooking some forbidden rice on the stove. So those two things are going at the same time. They don't take a lot of work. You just have to chop up your vegetables, put it on a roasting pan, put a little olive oil and salt and pepper and put it in the oven at 400 degrees for 20 minutes. I go to my seasonal vegetables for this, but I also just go to my favorite vegetable, which is broccoli. But as I mentioned earlier, Brussels sprouts are fantastic. You add some pancetta to that roasted vegetable while it's cooking. So too is the pancetta being roasted and you have all that little lovely flavor. It's fantastic. While you're roasting the vegetables, as I mentioned, you're also making rice. So what I do with one of my saucepans is I put about a half a cup of forbidden rice with about a teaspoon of butter. And I first will toast the rice for about two or three minutes until the butter's all melted and lovely. And then I pour in about two and a half, three cups of water, bring it to a boil with a little bit of salt. Once it's to a boil, I simmer it for about the length of the roasted vegetables. So about 20 minutes. And by the time that roasted vegetable, the roasted vegetables are done, the rice is done, I can do in the last five minutes that salmon pan fry and I have my dinner done in 30 minutes. I have my protein, I have my vegetable, and I have a little bit of whole grains. Simple and it always fills me up. I also mix that up with other proteins. I'll often do a chicken tender tenderized, sometimes chicken parm to add a little bit of cheese to it. It's something just that simple that you know you always have at the ready when the day gets long. So hopefully that's helped. Another option is to always have homemade vinaigrette in your kitchen, something that you really love. I have a recipe that I always go to and I've included it on the show notes with um, olive oil, balsamic vinaigrette, a little bit of Dijon and pepper. And I just always have have that other ready. I have my greens, my baby spinach or my arugula, and I will just top that, mix it all up, sometimes add some chicken to it. Maybe it's a salmon filet the next time instead of the rice. And that way you don't have to have all those different things going on. But yeah, so salad greens that are are dressed with your homemade vinaigrette and topped with your pan fried protein. So hopefully that's some simple options in the kitchen. But again, I would encourage you to go check out my winter capsule menu. It's free. It's downloadable. It's organized by day and it takes you from breakfast with two snacks, dinner and lunch. And it takes you all seven days. And the recipes are in the recipe page in the archives um, on the blog for any of the ones that I don't lay out on that sheet. Now, the other question you asked was about cookbooks. Now, back in episode 165, in the episode that's titled How to Enjoy Eating Every 
every day and love the results. On tip number 10, I listed six different cookbooks that are known for their seasonality and offering recipes based on the seasons. And I encourage you to check it out. They're of all different types. P. Allen Smith is one of my favorites. Also see that Muriel Giuliano, French women uh, don't get fat through the seasons. Um, She offers that up as well. But there are four other ones that I think you might want to check out based on what would fit your interest in food. There's one on soups as well, since we're in the middle of winter. And I'll provide a link to that on today's show notes. Now, you may also be wondering, okay, well, how do I know what kind of items to look for just in general for health purposes? Well, I've provided a link to a post I wrote a few years ago on how to feed your body well, and I break all of that down in very specific terms. All right, so I hope that helps somewhat. And again, if we can just get into that kitchen and know that we can make dinner in 30 minutes or under an hour at least, we're doing pretty well because yes, to cook longer than that every single day, most of us just don't have time to do that. I completely get that and completely empathize with you. All right, let's move on to Paris. Our last question of this episode is what to pack for a trip to Paris in the spring. Now I have this letter from Jen. We have a lot of Jens and Jennifers. I love it. (laughs) Um, Jen from Southern California writes, I am going to Paris this spring for a few weeks and I don't want to sacrifice style for comfort and good sense. What would you recommend wearing to walk and walk and enjoy the trip without looking like a tourist and keeping my sense of style? intact. What shoes to wear, handbag, jewelry, any thoughts would be so much appreciated. Okay. I loved pulling this one together because it got me excited for Paris and it also got me excited for the upcoming spring collections that are going to come out. So you're going to see a visual on the show notes. You're also going to see that I've shopped a bunch of items for you guys if you're interested, but I'm going to walk you through this list. These are the must have things that I would make sure that I pack. Now I don't know how long you're going for, but even if you're going for a week, this would be perfect. And then you can rotate these items the next week if you're staying longer than that. And the first thing with regards to just staying warm, it is spring in Paris. It's not summer. And um, it can be um, what's fickle. <laughs> the weather can be fickle. So you're going to have rain, you're going to have sun. It, you've got to have a coat. So I would recommend bringing a, a classic trench. Now you want this coat, whatever style it is, to be versatile for day or evening because it's hard to pack multiple outerwear clothing unless you bring a lot of suitcases. So bring a classic trench. And this is something that can be worn over jeans, but also over a dress that you may wear to a nice dinner. It is up to you as to the price point. As I mentioned back in November, I had a, I wrote a post about finding that perfect trench and I have a bunch of links and I'll provide that on today's show notes. But I also just went and picked a trench that is a great price point, just under $200 from J crew. It hits about mid thigh, maybe just above the knees. It's that classic khaki. It's nothing um, trendy about it. It's been available in J crew for years for a reason. So I provide a link to that one. Okay. So that's the first item I would make sure you have the other. And I think the most important item are the shoes you wear flat shoes, flat shoes with a rubber sole. So some traction leather soles are beautiful and fine. And you can bring that depending on where you're going to go. Um, but just note that sometimes you slip and slide on those and having those rubber soles with a little bit of traction is helpful. And so I would recommend something like aerosols and they have some beautiful slip ons and loafers and slippers and even ballet flats. And I provided a link to those and they're all in different colors and prints and they're very reasonable under a hundred dollars. So have a look at those. There's many other brands out there as well. And you may already have some, but even if you know, you're going to be getting on the Metro a lot, which I highly recommend, you're still going to walk a ton. So you still want, as you already seem to know, shoes that you will to walk, but still look great in. So I would recommend slip ons that have some structure, but not too much. They have a bit of style as well. The third thing with regards to bags, I would recommend two different bags. I would recommend a crossbody because you're going to be walking and going into all these different places. But I would also recommend just a classic leather tote, just like we were talking about at the top of today's episode. So back to the crossbody bag. I love having this kind of bag and that's the kind of bag I always make sure that I have when I travel because it's close to my body when I'm on the subway or the metro or the tube or the underground. And it's also large enough just for what I need, um, especially since I'm probably not bringing a ton of things with me if I'm going to be walking around. My phone can fit in there, my wallet, uh, maybe a a few little details, um, but that's about it. 
Um, I've provided a, an investment option on today's show notes, and I've also provided a mid-range option um, in classic colors of black, but also pink and yellow if some of those colors catch your attention. All right, so that's the bag, the shoes, and the coat for jewelry. I am a big believer in minimal jewelry, keeping it simple and wearing the same thing over and over and over again. So keeping it classic. So whether it's a favorite necklace, such as a pendant or a small pair of hoops or medium size hoops or studs or something that is going to work with a lot of different outfits. I would also recommend having a watch of some sort so that just in case your phone dies, you know what time it is, things like that. So I provided again a link to a few of those options. The next thing with regards to your outfits, I would encourage you to pack light long sleeve layers. It is spring um, as after all. So a nice fine knit cashmere sweater is a great option. It looks fantastic on. Choose a color that flatters your skin tone and a brand since you're going to France check out Eric Pompard. I have a handful of their sweaters. I always buy a size larger than what I typically go with in the States, but these are well-made investment pieces. But right now is the sale season in France and on their website, the sweaters are on sale and I've linked to them on today's show notes. So you're going to want to check them out, but they have all different sizes and all different colors and they're just beautiful, beautiful items. So I would recommend that since it is springtime. And since sometimes you're going to have some beautiful days, bring a blazer or something equivalent because you don't want to have to wear that long trench or that mid-size, mid-length trench all the time and simply wear it over the top of a nice silk blouse or a silk camisole. And the brand that I go to for my blazers is Theory. I mentioned them earlier in today's episode, but Theory um, makes quality products. They're about mid-range price options, so about two to three hundred dollars, and they offer them in the classic colors: so black, gray, navy, and all sorts of things along those lines. And, and I think you'll be happy with them. And the other little detail is to bring a beloved scarf, a scarf that, whether a print or a solid is something that will go with majority of the rest of your wardrobe. And I provide a beautiful option from Fendi on today's show notes. Perhaps that color will catch your eye. It's definitely a spring color and quite beautiful and an investment, but one that will last for your lifetime, I would imagine. The last two items with regards to the bottoms, this is going to depend on your style. I'm someone who would probably be wearing jeans or pants uh, most of the time. And so I would want to pack one to two pairs of pants or jeans or one to two pairs of skirts, depending on the style that looks best on your body. Now, if you're going for denim, I would recommend uh, ankle length, skinny or straight. And I would also recommend a dark denim so that it's versatile with very uh, with, with a variety of different tops that you might wear. Same with a skirt, except for you can also go through all different prints as well, depending on the, the solid tops that you have. And last but not least, I would recommend bringing a classic functional dress for dinner, but also a dress that could work for day as well. So for example, there's a black shift that I found that would work beautifully for evening. And there's a blue option in the same style that may be gorgeous during the day, depending on the weather. And then maybe a a midi length dress. That's the length that I really like, whether it's a wrap dress or a more form fitting dress. And uh, it's something that your trench can still work with if your trench is knee length. And that would look well during the day as well with a scarf um, and some simple flats. All right. So hopefully that list helps you out a little bit. Again, I've done some of the shopping on the show notes, the simply luxurious life.com backslash podcast 191. And if you have any other questions, just let me know. Maybe your question will be asked in an upcoming Ask Shannon episode coming up this summer. I want to thank the listeners and readers who sent in the questions for today's episode. They were fun to dive into, and I hope and I have a feeling they probably helped many other listeners and readers out there today. All right, I will be right back with this week's Petit Plaisir. All right, welcome 
back. So today's petite plaisir is a little bit different than what I've done in the past, but it's nonetheless truly a simple pleasure. It is the mini daily puzzle from the New York Times. So I'm someone who enjoys the Sunday puzzle on the Sunday morning edition with Will Shorts. And I can maybe get one or two of the questions that he asks. And I'm so thrilled when I can get three. And I think he asks usually six or seven of them. So when a colleague came up to me recently and said, Shannon, do you get, do you do this, da, 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 this puzzle? And I'm, I'm thinking, no, I don't. And he told me all about it. And he loves to do it every morning. And he was just delighted with it. And me being an English teacher, he thought maybe I have done it and I hadn't. So I have checked it out and I am loving it. So it's free. That's the beauty of it. You do not have to subscribe to anything. It's absolutely free. I provide a link on today's show notes. You can get it on your phone. You can get it on the computer if you're at your desktop. And it takes fewer than five minutes. It's an exercise for the brain. It's timed. So if you care about how long it takes you, I have a, another colleague who said, yeah, I do it. And I try to do it under one minute. I'm like, wow, that's amazing. That's really hard for me to do. Um, but anyway, there's different things that you could do to challenge yourself. And now what I also love about this puzzle as many of you probably know from all their other puzzles, if you if you do subscribe, is that you can check different words as you go. And you can also reveal different words as you go to help yourself out. So you can be really staunch and say, no, I'm not checking anything. Or if you, you know, you're just learning, you just want to enjoy yourself. Why not? Who cares? So uh, the other thing that I also like about it is that it's current, but also historical with references. So while it's, it, it, it rewards you for knowing what's going on, in, in modern culture. It also, obviously, as we know within the New York Times, rewards you for having a breadth of knowledge um, about everything. So it's a lot of fun in that way. So if you want to challenge your brain every single day, they have a new puzzle. And um, I think you might enjoy it. I know I am. I really didn't uh, know if I'd really stay consistent, but I have been just devouring them as of late. So that link is on the show notes for the New York Times mini daily puzzle. I hope you've enjoyed this week's Petit Plaisir, where each week ideas are shared to make the everyday all the more enjoyable. Tune in at the end of each Monday's podcast, where I'll recommend a book, a film, or a recipe and maybe even a puzzle, <laughs> anything that is a simple pleasure to satiate your sophisticated taste. Thank you for tuning in to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. For more ideas and inspiration throughout the week, stop by the blog, the simply luxurious life.com or pick up the book, choosing the simply luxurious life, a modern woman's guide now available in paperback as well as ebook and audio versions, which are available on audible iTunes and Amazon and to receive exclusive news as well as an extra dose of inspiration to jumpstart your weekend, subscribe to the Simply Luxurious Life's weekly newsletter, which arrives in your inbox each Friday to enjoy with a hot cup of tea or a morning cup of coffee. Until next Monday, I'm your host, Shannon Abels. Bonjour.